Hey, everybody, Mitch Tadman here. Thanks for joining me today. This is the security news update for March 24th, 2024. And uh, privacy and security alerts. Uh, this is news, but not news. Uh, startup Minlify says that uh, customer GitHub access tokens, which were trusted to them, were compromised in a hack. And then those tokens were publicly exposed, meaning that those customers' GitHub accounts were now free range to anybody on the dark web and i'm sure all of the source code or a lot of it at least uh including for example security keys that people erroneously store security keys and get up not a great plan uh we're now uh you know stolen uh huge problem in terms of theft of intellectual property i would not be surprised if the company gets sued out of existence because you know for most companies their source code is their crown jewel and if their source code is now compromised, then to, to the extent, in fact, not only compromised, but potentially uh, illegally modified, uh, that's really a problem for most companies. Bottom line here is your security is only as good as third parties that you trust. And if you trust companies like Midlify, then um, you, know, you run the risk of having your crown jewels being uh, open for anybody on the dark web to go off and, and do whatever they want with. Uh, next, um, uh, at least 900 websites and probably a lot more because that number seems ludicrously low to me are using Google's uh, Firebase cloud database um, and they're exposing passwords and billing information unencrypted because of the way they have erroneously configured Firebase. Uh, so this is I mean, I, I guess in, in theory, you could say this is a Google's fault, but on the other hand, it's also the company's fault for not configuring their cloud software correctly. This uh, developer error is, as uh, uh, researchers say, uh, is exposing about 125 million user records. And the end user, of course, has no way of knowing whether or not their data has been compromised by a vendor that is kind of a, a repeat of the, the last story. You know, the users have no idea of knowing whether or not their data has been compromised by vendors that they trust, uh, perhaps erroneously, but they trust. And uh, next, there, and this is, I guess, bad news and good news, uh, Microsoft has identified the source of uh, the domain controller crashes that have occurred since their March uh, security update. Uh, it's a memory leak, and they have released an emergency patch. Um, so either get that patch in process like right away, or monitor the memory utilization of your domain controllers because uh, they might go uh, poof in the night and then nobody can authenticate against those domain controllers. This obviously only applies to users who are using on-premise domain controllers. Uh, next, <laughs> God. sometimes you just gotta laugh at this stuff. Um, Three million hotel room door locks are vulnerable to an attack. Um, all it takes is one valid card key, uh, a couple of blank card keys, uh, or expired ones, um, and perhaps an Android phone to clone these keys and away you go. Yeah, you know, it's one of those conversations again, of security versus convenience, you pick one. You know, the card keys that you just kind of tap on a door, slide in a slot, are very convenient. Uh, they can be expired and, and whatever, uh, but apparently they're not so secure. These uh, card keys are also used in places like elevators and parking garages and a bunch of other places, not just hotels. The researchers who found this bug uh, revealed it to the company in 2022. That's about two years ago. And uh, in a year and a half, they have in fact developed a fix. Uh, but the problem is it requires upgrading the locks themselves, the software that the organization uses, as well as the cards. Uh, so this is not a simple or cheap fix. I'm not sure who's paying the bill for that. And it's likely that a lot of these locks will never be fixed. Um, so, you know, be that it is one more time, security and convenience, you get to pick one. Uh, in the legal department, uh, the Pentagon has uh, kind of legalized hacking against them with some constraints, fair enough. Um, but they started a bug bounty program where they're paying the good guys. And they acknowledge now that they have uh, actually celebrated that they have received 50,000 reports of vulnerabilities. Now, you know, the good news, bad news here is there were 50,000 vulnerabilities so far. 
the good news is that at least the Pentagon knows about them now, and hopefully they'll fix at least you know the vast majority of them. Uh, so you know, I think it's better off to pay the good guys uh, rather than letting the Chinese uh, finding them and not telling us about them. Um, next, the Education Department assisted in the FBI and the Multi-State Information Sharing and Analysis Center (ISAC). Uh, has released guidance uh, on DDoS attacks. They initially released this guidance about two years ago. This is an update to that guidance. And basically, the reason why they're putting this out is because uh, denial of service attacks are coming on strong these days. We've seen, for example, the entire country of France, the government was shut down by a massive denial of service attack over their support of Ukraine. And, uh, you know, it's okay, I guess, if it happens to somebody else. But if your customers can't get to your website, for example, because you're under denial of service attack uh, and they can't place orders and they can't find out about your product, they'll just go someplace else and likely they won't come back. So um, it's a problem. Uh, if you run a resource and you're not doing, actively doing things to prevent denial of service attacks, though, and you should, you need help figuring out, let us know. Um, but you might want to read the, the report. It's pretty short. In the breaches department, uh, yet another mortgage company got hacked. This time it's Nation's Direct Mortgage. This time the hack is relatively small. Only 80,000 only 80, customers were affected. Um, and the data that was stolen was, was less than, say, the data that was stolen in the uh, Mr. Cooper attack or the uh, Fidelity attack or the Land um, America hack or any of the other hacks. So, uh, yeah, still the... The class action lawyers are, are uh, chuckling uh, and thinking about all the money they're going to make from suing Nations Direct. But, um, you know, if you're not actively working to prevent the hackers from getting in, you're probably going to be one of the folks that are going to be uh, on the wrong side of that. Next, uh, not surprisingly, attacks against government agencies continue. This week, we hear stories about, uh, in a lot of cases, and in addition to the federal government, a lot of cases, this local municipalities, you know, cities, uh, states, water districts, uh, electric utilities, stuff like that. This week, here we added two uh, Florida cities, Jacksonville Beach and Pensacola. Jacksonville Beach has assured employees that they will get paid. Uh, that's probably to uh, stand a revolt, uh, the reason why they said that particular thing. The rest of the services, you know, we'll get to them when we get to them. Cities across the country have fallen for these attacks, and they'll continue to fall for these attacks because cities don't have the money, resources. Um, I saw one thing where it was suggesting that maybe that uh, states mobilize the National Guard to help cities, and that, and that could certainly help. Uh, I'm not sure that the states have enough money uh, to go off and fund the, you know, the National Guard because when they go on active duty, then they have to pay them. So uh, that's a challenge, but but they need to do something because clearly the cities are, are not going to deal with this by themselves. It's not that come out well. Uh, next, uh, Microsoft uh, announced plans to deprecate, and that means no longer support uh, 1,024 bit RSA keys. Um, are they horribly insecure? Horrible is a relative word, I guess. They are insecure. Uh, Microsoft rarely deprecates old stuff because they don't want to break anything and they know that their biggest customers and businesses are probably the worst. Um, so uh, in this particular case, they're going to go off and, and stop supporting 1024-bit RSA keys for everybody except their biggest customers who you know, maybe uh, arguably have the worst security. And I'm sure there's a lot of big customers that have decent security, but there's also a lot of corporate customers that don't have very good security at all. Uh, next, um, the Fed say that CISA is not prepared to defend operational technology. Operational technology is that technology which runs all of our critical infrastructure, whether it's a uh, you know, gas uh, pipeline or oil refinery or manufacturing or anything else. All of that computers that, that automate those factories. And, you know, Congress told CISA that they need to go off and help protect that. You know, in a, in a number of recent years, they've actually given system more money. In this most recent uh, budget bill that they just passed, uh, they gave the system less money. So I don't think that that's going to get a whole lot better quicker. 
I think what systems are going to be forced to do is decide how to go reallocate resources and spend you know more money on uh, operational technology than they have been because up until now they really have not done the job and um, you know it's going to affect the country and that's really the challenge for that. Uh, next, DoD contractors uh, need to stand up and take notice. If you use a third-party managed service provider, the new proposed regulations that are likely to go into effect early next year, maybe late this year, uh, have new rules regarding managed service providers. And those rules may require you literally to change managed service providers because the folks that you're using now won't be able to meet the rules. Uh, if you don't understand that, if you're not already working on that, uh, please reach out to us. And if you have questions about it, please reach out to us because it's going to be a problem for a lot of uh, defense contractors who are using managed service providers that will not uh, meet the, the tests or rules. Uh, and finally, um, in the security news bites, um, like everybody else, Reddit has decided as part of their, not, I guess, fairness, not part of their IPO, but in light of their IPO, uh, that they plan to sell user-generated content. Uh, so all that stuff that people posted in Reddit uh, that they thought maybe was sort of theirs, uh, Reddit has decided retroactively, no, 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 no. We're going to sell that to the highest bidder. And, uh, you know, they said it's kind of, they did one deal, I think, that was worth $60 million a year, uh, for example. Uh, so that will continue, I am sure. There's a question about whether uh, age verification laws for people to view porn are really just uh, a business sales tool for uh, virtual private networks. Uh, we saw that in Texas, so that law briefly went into effect. Um, that the use of VPNs went up about 300%. And in Utah, which is kind of unusual, uh, it went up about 1,000%. And since uh, the government says in the state that that adults who go off and, and view porn uh, but have to identify who they are so they can't do it anonymously have nothing to worry about, if that's a true statement, which the government says it is, then obviously all these thousand percent growth is because kids are using them. So is are these age verification laws really stopping underage people from uh, viewing porn? I mean, you know, you're kind of using the government's own argument, I'd say probably not. Um, researchers have uh, figured out a way in literally 10 to 15 seconds to take over the network inside of uh, these big long haul trucks uh, using the logging devices that truckers are required to use uh, to track how many hours they're driving and stuff like that. Uh, those things are connected to the to the, to the bus called the CAN bus on, on a truck. And uh, apparently you can reprogram those things in about 10 to 15 seconds uh, without even being inside the truck. So, you know, one place, for example, you can go do that would be to go to a truck stop where these trucks are idling all the time. And you just kind of, you know, drive up next to one of these trucks or near one of these trucks and reprogram their device. Uh, the government is suing Apple, uh, saying that they have a monopoly in, in the App Store. Uh, and they said that they're using privacy and security as what the government calls an elastic shield, meaning that they say security is important in one case because it helps their business model. And they say it's not a security problem in another case because it would hurt their business model. Uh, we shall see where that goes. It's interesting. That lawsuit kind of follows what the European Union has threatened Apple with. And in the case of the European Union, the threat is attached to a, a potentially, that would never happen, potentially a $9 billion fine. Uh, Apple um, kind of looked at the, the balance sheet impact of that and said, oh yeah, I think we're going to change our ways. Uh, but only in the European Union. So assuming this U.S. lawsuit eventually after many years, plays out or Apple folds, figuring that they are going to lose because they already agreed to do this in the European Union. So it's not clear what their justification would be for not doing it in the United States. Um, maybe some of the benefits that users in the European Union are seeing will come to the users in the United States. Um, and hacking, uh, even legal hacking, uh, can earn you a lot of money. Uh, this year's phone to own, uh, earned hackers uh, about a million 
$132,000 and, and, and a free Tesla to boot uh, for hacking the Tesla. Uh, so, um, you know, apparently even good guy hackers can make a decent chunk of change. So with that, uh, that's all I have for this week. Thanks for listening. Uh, obviously, if you need any help with any cybersecurity matter, please reach out to us. And until next time, stay safe. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching. For more information or to purchase this or any other of our board or executive services, visit us at cybersecurity.com. Call us at 303-887-5864 or email us at rh at cybersecurity.com. Goodbye.